Okay, so I want to go through the rendering with channels and data uh, with Arnold. So this is something new that we're going to be uh, shipping in update uh, 2019.2. <clears throat> so I have two emitters here. So let me make this a little bit bigger so we can see it. Okay, so I have two emitters here. And each emitter has a different density. So this one has a density of 500 and this one has a density of 1000. And uh, I've got the display settings to set to density. So the minimum is blue and the red one is max. And uh, as I scrub, you can see that sure enough, we have uh, two different color particles emitting and mixing together. And we want to use that at render time. So the way you could do it before, if you went into render settings and you went into um, cache mesh, you could actually assign a say a density to a map channel, you know, whatever channel you want, and um, and it would render. But with Arnold, we didn't have anything to do that. So now we do. Uh, so you can see that this UI switches a little bit to check boxes instead of uh, UV maps. So when it's generating a procedural mesh, it doesn't really use UV channels as much, or yeah, as channel data. Uh, but you can pass these directly from the BIP file, which is a lot more efficient anyway. So I have a couple checked. Currently I have vorticity and I have density. So we'll just open up the material editor. And the way this works is, uh, for example, okay, I want the base color to, um, we'll just use a user data, user data float. And if I open this up, it has something that I can type in here. So I know I want density. I could easily just type density. And uh, you would think that work, would work, but that's not always the case because Arnold is, is case sensitive and you don't know what the internal channels are really named um, specifically all the time. So we've made this easy. You can right click, copy channel name from clipboard. And then I'll just select here and control V, enter. And now I have density going in. Now, this still won't work very well because uh, the values are between 500 and 1,000. And we're going into a color map, which is expecting you know, a color RGB. Uh, and if we, we pass a float of 500 to 1,000, it's going to look really weird. So what we need to do is we need to add another map called, um, it's in the math, and it's called range. And then what I'll do is I'll just pipe that into the input and this into the base color. And since we know that the minimum maximum range is um, 500, that's what we set in a thousand. And we want to output zero to one. So let's just close this and do a quick render. So we can see this one is emitting black, this one's emitting white, and they're mixing together to make a gray. So we know it's working. And I'm gonna close this. And we're gonna, I wanna make them red and blue. So I'm gonna use an OSL map for this. And yeah, let's call it the OSL math. I am looking for interpolate. So with interpolate, I've got the values of zero and one. And so I'll pipe that into the input. And then for the max or the minimum, we'll do blue. And for the max, we'll do red. And then we'll pipe that into the base color. And let's do another render. Okay, so that's working. So let's do something else now. Let's, um, let's use the vorticity for something. So I had that checked over here. Here it is, vorticity. I'm just gonna go ahead and copy this, copy channel. We'll go back to the material editor and let's, let's uh, affect transparency with it. So transparency, uh, I know that again, here, let's just do this. Let's just take these two, I'm gonna shift drag, copy them. 
and I'll cover that into the transparency map. And the data, I know that I'm going to paste in vort vorticity. And then the range, uh, I know that the range is different. So I know it's not 500,000, but let's just look and see what it is. Uh, so I have, if I go to something like, let's do a box. And the box, I want to use vorticity. And I want to get the size domain so I can see it's 0 and 94.98 uh, is the range. So I'll just switch this back to Arnold's surface. And then let's go here and let's go 0 and 94. And uh, make sure I have that as vorticity. OK. And let's render again. OK, so we're seeing that it's kind of working. It's getting a little bit of translucency through here, but I really want these sides to be the translucent. So I'm just going to do this. I'm just going to open up the material again. And then the range, I'm going to swap these. So I'm going to say that's 1, and this is 0. Render. OK, so this is kind of where we're. This is what I wanted. I wanted these to be clear in the areas that were had vorticity to be more um, opaque. So I want it to be actually a little bit more opaque than that. So I'll just drop this to, let's say, 60 and render. Okay, so now we're getting a little bit more opaqueness through part of it. And that's kind of what I wanted, so I'm going to stop there. But now this shows you how you can use the channel data um, for rendering with Arnold.